white blood cells, aka leukocytes. These are the second most common cell type in the blood. But what do we know about their structure and what exactly do they do? Well, that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. So let's do it. When something harmful enters the body, you wanna have a way to get rid of it. Also, if something goes wrong with one of your body cells, let's say a cell is produced with some jacked up DNA, well, you wanna get rid of that too. White blood cells play a major role in the body's defense mechanism, your immune system. You see, your immune system exists to protect the body from harmful stuff. And the white blood cells, they're a big part of those processes. Now, I'm going to be using leukocytes and white blood cells interchangeably because, well, they're the same thing. So don't get confused. Let's take a look at some of the characteristics of these white blood cells. Now, we spent a good amount of time looking at red blood cells in previous videos. We even looked at how blood cells are made through the process of hemopoiesis. Let's talk about how white blood cells and red blood cells differ. When we looked at how red blood cells were produced, we saw that at a certain point in the process, the differentiated cells got rid of organelles like the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum, and others so that they can be highly specialized for their function of delivering oxygen. Well, white blood cells are different in that they're the one category of cells in the blood that are complete cells. And by that, I mean they keep all of their organelles that you'd see in a typical body cell. Unlike red blood cells, they need DNA. They need mitochondria to generate energy. They need to be able to create proteins like antibodies and many others. So you will see a nucleus. You will see things like the endoplasmic reticulum, but you'll also see some other stuff. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Another difference between red and white blood cells is that white blood cells don't have as long of a lifespan as red blood cells. The average red blood cell will typically last around 120 days. But some white blood cells can be around for just a few hours, and in some cases, even minutes, depending on the type of infection they're trying to get rid of. And one final difference between red and white blood cells is that there are way more red blood cells than white. While there can be around 5 million red blood cells in just one microliter of blood, there are typically around five to 10,000 white blood cells in that same amount of blood. That's a huge difference. Now we have to talk about a very unique characteristic of white blood cells. Unlike erythrocytes, the red blood cells, leukocytes don't spend all their time in blood vessels. Yeah, they travel along in those blood vessels, kind of scouting things out, and it uses these blood vessels to get to a specific destination, but then they're able to leave the blood vessels and enter the tissues directly via a process called diapedesis. They literally like squeeze in between the cells of blood vessels to get to where they need to be. It's a pretty cool process actually, and a pretty cool word, diapedesis. I like it. If you say that in a conversation, you sound smart. <laughs> now let's look at the different types of leukocytes. Leukocytes can be divided into two main groups, granular leukocytes or granulocytes, and agranular leukocytes or agranulocytes. Now, this distinction has to do with what early scientists observed under the microscope after staining them in different ways. The three granular leukocytes are white blood cells that have granules inside of them, or at least the granules are clear. These granules are tiny little containers. They're actually vesicles that have stuff inside of them that have specific functions, and we're gonna look into that in a little bit. The three granular leukocytes are the neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. The agranular leukocytes are the monocytes and the lymphocytes. And of course, they lack granules, or at least you can't see them as clearly. Let's dig into the granular leukocytes first. These cells are all produced in the red bone marrow, and they live for a very short period of time. It can be hours or it can be days, which, like I said, is very short if you compare that to the 120 days that red blood cells can last. When you look at them, you'll notice something very peculiar about their nucleus. They actually have these lobes. That's another distinguishing characteristic. Now, the most common of the three types of granular leukocytes are the neutrophils. Let's deal with those first. They make up about 50 to 70% of the leukocytes. They're called neutrophils because the granules show up clearly when you stain them with a stain that's not acidic or basic. In other words, a neutral stain. That's when you see them most clearly and they show up with kind of a light lilac color. 
And when looking at the nucleus of these neutrophils, you're going to see that they have anywhere from two to five lobes, depending on the age of the cell. The older it gets, the more lobes you're likely to see. Although, keep in mind, they don't really stay around that long. Neutrophils are part of the body's primary line of defense against invading microorganisms, things like bacteria. When there's bacteria in your body, they often release certain chemicals. One example would be cytokines. Now, the neutrophils are there circulating in the bloodstream, and when they detect that chemical, they're attracted to it. So they go to the site of infection to find the bacteria. They will then basically eat up those bacteria, bringing them into the cell. This process is called phagocytosis. You know, have you ever played that game Pac-Man where you have these little yellow Pac-Mans going around eating up these dots? Well, picture that, except it's not quite as fun because bacteria don't taste fun. <laughs> okay, and once the bacteria is in the cell, that's when the granules go to work. Let's talk about those granules. Inside the granules of neutrophils, there are a number of substances. There's an enzyme called lysozyme. Anytime you hear lyso or lysis, think of something that breaks stuff down. Hemolysis is breaking down red blood cells. In this case, with lysozyme, uh, the enzyme helps to break down bacterial cell walls. But we also have other stuff in there, things like hydrogen peroxide and defensins. Basically, these substances and others that are in the granules all work together to help break down those foreign invaders. You'll see the granules combining with the ingested bacteria and basically digesting them. That's how they do their work. Now, let's talk about eosinophils. This makes up about 2-4% to 4 of the leukocyte population. They're called eosinophils because the granules show up best when they're stained with an acidic stain called eosin. Hence the name eosinophils. The nuclei also have lobes, but we're talking like 2-3 to three lobes. Now, in their granules, you will find substances that are involved with dealing with things like allergic reactions, parasitic worm infections, chronic inflammation, and also some autoimmune diseases. So when a person has eosinophilia, meaning they're higher than normal levels of eosinophils, and that's in the blood, th that can be an indication that we're dealing with one of those situations. And the last of the granular leukocytes are the basophils. This is the one that we have the least amount of. I'm talking less than a percent of the leukocytes. You see their granules best when you use a basic stain. Uh, their granules are on the larger side and they show up dark blue when they're stained. These guys are very important in the local inflammatory response they kind of intensify that response. They have things like histamines and other substances that are involved in things like that. So those were the granulocytes, the leukocytes with granules. Now let's talk about the agranular leukocytes. First off, technically these still have granules, but they're smaller and less visible. When they were first described, uh, they couldn't see the tiny granules, so they assumed that they were agranular and the name kind of stuck. There are two types of agranulocytes, the lymphocytes and the monocytes. For the lymphocytes, we have three main types, the natural killer, or NK cells, and the B and T cells, or the B and T lymphocytes. The natural killer cells, here's how they work. Let's say a cell gets infected with a virus. There are cells that will display fragments of that virus on their surfaces. When the natural killer cells detect those abnormal structures on the cell, they will actually kill the cells with the virus inside of them. It does this for cells infected with other viruses, cancer cells, and other cells that have weird proteins on their surfaces. Now the B and T cells, or the B and T lymphocytes, these bad boys are part of what we call specific immunity. You see, nonspecific immunity is more general. There's inflammation or an infection, and other leukocytes will fight against them in a more general way. They don't care as much what it is. They just want to get rid of it because it's bad. With specific immunity, they're fighting against specific infections or specific antigens. The B cells will produce antibodies to fight against that specific disease. This kind of specific immunity is called humoral immunity. T cells are also involved in specific immunity, but at the cellular level. They're gonna physically attack the entire cell, whether that's a foreign cell or a disease cell. 
Now what's cool about these B and T cells is that you can also get memory cells. Once there's exposure to a specific illness, uh, these memory cells are produced so that if the same pathogen ever enters your system again, the response is much quicker towards that specific disease and that's a beautiful thing. A lot of vaccines are based on this concept. You build up antibodies against a specific disease and if you encounter that disease in the future, your body defenses are ready to attack. Okay, one more cell. These are the monocytes. These are larger cells and represent about two to 8% of the leukocytes. Once these monocytes leave the circulation and enter the tissues, they become macrophages. These can take in bacteria and other antigenic material by phagocytosis. You remember that Pac-Man thing we spoke about? That's what we're talking about here. Once they do that, they can help with getting rid of these substances, either by doing some damage themselves or by recruiting other cells to help in the process. Okay, you know what? There's a whole lot more that we can say about white blood cells, and I will, but that's a lot for one video. In the next video, we'll dig into disorders that affect white blood cells. Peace.